Right, hi, it's John Glynn. Um, I'm going to be looking at the selections, a selection tool again um, here, and in Photoshop Elements 20. Um, in your toolbox next to the lasso tool is a selection brush, quick selection brush. If you click on the quick selection brush, at the bottom of your monitor, underneath your photograph, will be options that it gives you, and we're going to be looking at the magic wand tool. Okay, um, click on the magic wand tool gives you different choices as to how this particular tool will work. Um, a tolerance level. Tolerance relating to how much it will pick up of your picture in one go. So if you click on that uh, magic wand tool and then put your mouse over a portion of your picture and click once with the left mouse key it will make an automatic selection based on the tonal ranges that that is picking up so you can see that's picked up the sky and it's picked up most of the blues in the sky but not all the blues um, but it's missed out other portions of the of the the sky if i want it to pick up more of the sky I would open, I would up the tolerance and click again in this guy. It will clear the selection. I click once more and now you can see that it's clicked up more of the sky but it's also picked up extra um, bits of of the around the edge of the photograph which may not have been included in the first selection and that's down to tolerance. The more you up the tolerance the more the magic wand will pick up as by similar tones across the whole photograph. It's not colour, it's tone it's looking at. As I reduce the tolerance and I go right the way down and click, it picks up less of the photograph or fewer tones in a given area. Okay, it's looking at specific areas. So if I click inside the sea, it picks up portions of the sea. If I click on the harbour, you can see it selects parts of the harbour of similar tonal ranges on whatever I click on. Okay. If I wish to, um, I can add to that selection by holding down the Alt key on the, on the Shift key rather. The Shift key on my keyboard gives me a plus sign and I can click anywhere else in the picture and you can see it picks up more areas of similar tonal ranges to that area I've chosen. Okay, so you can add to the selection by holding down the the shift key on your keyboard and you can remove the selection by clicking down on the and keeping the alt key, the alternative key on the keyboard. The choices are still there as, as well at the bottom. You'll notice if I click on the alt key, it will jump across to the choices at the bottom of your monitor. So you got plus goes to new otherwise it's just a new selection and the alternative key is subtract so it'll click on the subtract option okay and i just find it quicker to use the shift key and alternative key rather than having to click on these buttons at the bottom to do it so these are choices that you have if you just click in your picture with your left mouse key I'm using a PC by the way, you can see that it selects different parts of the photograph. If you hold down the shift key, it will select, keep your previous selection and add to the selection. Okay, if you want more to be selected, then you can up your tolerance and it will increase the selection. So now it's selected all the way around the sky as well. Refining the edge allows you to come back into your way of viewing the information here. I've got it on um, black and white, so it can show me what I've selected. I've selected anything that's white, I've selected anything that's black is not selected. You can see it on white, you can see it on black, you can do it as an overlay, you can do it as your marching ants, which is what it was originally, and you can do it on the layers. I don't have any layers below my background layer in the layers palette so therefore it's just um, comes up as being uh, transparent and you've got reveal layer 
which just left the picture without any um, without anything being selected. Back to marching ants is the usual way of working but you may find it's easier to see by trying it on other ways of viewing the picture especially when you come to actually start softening or feathering the selection as you can see by feather selection I soften the edges and also by smoothing the edges is a, a softer form of feathering you can add contrast which may help your selection to clean it up and you can shift the edges of your selection um, as well if you think that your overall selection is incorrect and you've also got ways of um, refining the selection if you need to through these brushes and you can zoom in and move the selection around you've got a zoom tool and a hand tool for moving around the selection that you've got here if you need to and when you output it you can output it to a separate layer which would appear above your background layer you, and a, um, it could be a mask within the same layer mind you a new layer and a layer a new layer with a mask or to a different document so ways of outputting your picture if you wish to to continue working on it um, at a later stage so a quick selection the, the magic selection brush is a quick way um, of, of making quick selections in your photograph of similar tones um, I'm just going to say something else which is this contiguous there's a word down here in the bottom of your monitor uh, which is called contiguous and I've got it clicked so if I leave it ticked I'll do it in the sky again I'll up the tolerance and click once that's taken up too much so I'm going to reduce the tolerance slightly try again still too much I want it just to take up the sky ah oh, there we are picked up the sky now you can see that along the top edge of my bridge I've got the dotted lines the little marching ants and it doesn't incur or encroach rather it doesn't encroach into the bridge section but I might want it to pick up the whole sky in one swoop rather than me having to hold down the shift key and click in each of these to add add it in as my selection it would take me a long time to do it manually one at a time so if I untick contiguous go back up to the selection and click once more you can now see that it's picked up everything between the struts of the of the, the bridges as well now if that's still too much um, you can reduce the tolerance the other option is you can take this this area the water for instance which is now overly selected if I hold the alt key down I can remove that by just clicking once with the alt key and remove the bulk of that selection at the bottom but still keep the sky I could go into my quick selection tool and using uh, make the brush a bit bigger so you can see it holding down my alt key I can clean up areas that I don't wish to include <coughs> excuse me and holding the plus I can add to areas I do wish to include so I can continue working on these selections um, fairly quickly by jumping between the, the brushes I don't have to just work it within one brush I can do a quick magic wand selection which might pick up a good portion of my selection selected area in one go and then jumping into other brushes will allow me to do refining of those selections okay so they're not just that they're not independent of one another uh, about the contiguous or non-contiguous if it's contiguous it means it will just work in one area only if it's uncontiguous or non-contiguous it will spread the area and link to other areas which are next to it and that's important if you're wanting to pick up um, aspects as I have here behind the bridge or if you're working on a sky and you're wanting to pick up areas behind a tree then you'd want to make sure that that is unticked 
Okay. Uh, the other thing they do have um, in here, and I'll just going up to uh, select and deselect for a second, um, is subject select subject. I'm just going to see what it comes up with. Yes, same again. It always comes up with the same selection in this particular photo, which is this boy here, and it selects the boy. It's the nearest thing to me, um, and it's also um, the biggest object, and therefore it thinks, ah, oh, that's what I'm wanting to select. So although it does have an auto-select option, effectively, it may not necessarily select what you want in a photo. Okay, so don't be reliant on that to do your selections, but it might be a quick way of doing it if it's obvious in the picture as to what it is that you want to select. It may be a starting point. Okay, um, so have a go with the, the magic wand tool and just go through the process of using the magic wand, clicking on areas of your picture, changing the tolerance and just click again will clear the selection, click once more will change the selection. So all with the left mouse key and just go round clicking and unclicking just to get an idea of what it's actually doing and then also holding the shift key to add to a selection and the minus key or the alt key rather the alt alternative um, on your keyboard to deselect areas and also do jump back into other selection options and try them out and see how they work so you get an understanding that you can you can work across selection tools you're not forced to just work within one selection tool have a go and, uh, and see how you get on okay thank you for watching